Thanks for joining in as we get a good drug picture of aspirin. Aspirin, also known as acetyl salicylic acid, is a medication that's used to treat pain, fever, and inflammation. In addition, low-dose aspirin is also used long-term to help prevent heart attacks, strokes, and arterial blood clots. Aspirin is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, or NSAID, and like other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, it works by inhibiting the actions of cyclooxygenase, or COX enzymes. And the cyclooxygenase, or COX enzymes, make the prostaglandins. But it also affects the enzymes that make the protective prostaglandins. So, like every single analgesic that we have, aspirin comes along with many adverse effects. Let's take a look at how aspirin works and why it's used to prevent cardiovascular events while other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are associated with increased cardiovascular events. When we discuss the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen and naproxen, we went into some detail about how and where the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, including aspirin, targeted pain, inflammation, and fever. And to avoid repetition, I won't go back into that here. But just realize that the mechanism of pain relief is the same for aspirin. We learned that by decreasing prostaglandins through COX-2 inhibition, aspirin decreases the inflammatory response, decreases the propagation of impulses that are ultimately perceived by the brain as pain, and decreases fever. But Aspirin is also a very, very potent inhibitor of COX-1 enzyme. And COX-1 makes thromboxane, and thromboxane is a proplatelet agent that platelets use. In order to understand this, let's get into a bit of a review of the pathology. A person who's susceptible to a heart attack or stroke normally has developed atherosclerosis, or sometimes called hardening of the arteries or plaques on the blood vessels. And we think of hardening of the arteries as being really super strong, but unfortunately the hardening makes them more brittle. And when these cracks appear on the blood vessels, there's going to be a summoning of the platelets to start aggregating, and as the platelets start aggregating in the area, the coagulation cascade is set off and that strengthens the clot. If that clot is forming on one of the blood vessels in the heart, it could cause a heart attack, a myocardial infarction, and if it's happening in the brain, it could cause a stroke. Alternatively, the clot could be forming on a larger blood vessel and break off, become an embolus, and travel to the brain or the heart. The reason that aspirin is so effective at reducing platelet aggregation and therefore reducing heart attacks and strokes while other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are not is because aspirin is an extremely strong and irreversible COX-1 inhibitor. And that means that we're taking away one of the important proplatelet tools that the platelet has, and we're doing it for the entire life of the platelet, which is about nine days. The platelets cannot make more COX-1 enzyme. And just a note here, taking away the ability of the platelets to form thromboxane does not totally inactivate the platelets, but rather it makes it more difficult to aggregate and ultimately more difficult to form clots. But the same action works slightly against us here because we use platelets to repair blood vessels. We have tiny tears in blood vessels all the time 
and platelets are our main tool for repairing those before there's any significant bleeding into the tissues. So aspirin use increases the risk of microbleeds throughout the body, but especially important is the fact that aspirin increases the possibility of microbleeds into the brain. Obviously, the antiplatelet actions of any drug that decreases COX-1 is going to make that drug contraindicated with other drugs that could affect bleeding, like the anticoagulants, for instance, warfarin. Remember that we need both the platelets and the coagulation cascade to repair little blood vessel tears, and as you're decreasing the activity of both systems, there's a massive increased risk of bleeding into the brain. Also, the bleeding risk is greater among people who are older and who drink alcohol or take other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. While aspirin is much better for people who are at risk of thrombotic events, it comes along with a much higher risk of kidney damage than even the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. And this is because the protective and homeostatic prostaglandins in the kidneys are greatly affected by aspirin. Also, aspirin damages the stomach and predisposes the stomach to ulcerations because it damages the wall of the stomach and also decreases the protective prostaglandins. Aspirin is contraindicated in children, especially if the child has a bacterial or viral infection because of the risk of Ray's syndrome, which is a rare but oftentimes fatal illness. And aside from the adverse effects that we've already mentioned, common side effects include upset stomach, and therefore aspirin should always be taken along with food. Also, aspirin can worsen asthma symptoms in some people, and high doses may result in ringing of the ears, or sometimes called tinnitus or tinnitus.